Welcome back to another day here on the Lorcana Pixelborn Client. Today, we're playing deck number two of the top five decks I would expect to see at the set championships and the challenge events. Atlanta, Chicago, Texas, uh, Las Vegas, that's one, and Seattle. Oh, and one in Canada somewhere. This is a Sapphire and Steel deck. It's a control deck. It's a lucky dime deck. I do go into about a 10 minute, you know, seven to 10 minute long breakdown in my top five decks in a previous video a few days ago. You can find that on the channel. It's the top five decks for the set championships. If you want a really in-depth breakdown of this deck, that's where I would go. But some uh, quick hot notes on it. This deck cares about ramping with its Mickey Mouse. It cares about ramping with Fishbone Quill. We are rocking 17 uninkables in the deck. Fish Bone Quill is important. It's not necessary, but it is important. We do want to get our Lucky Dimes, but Lucky Dimes can come later in the game. It is a two of, just like Bell is a two of. These are a couple of cards we want to see late in the game because they don't really do anything fantastic until late in the game. We need a lot of ink. Belle needs 10 ink before she starts really doing anything. And it's, we need seven ink to get Lucky Dime down. Ideally, we, we want to be on nine ink so it can come down and activate immediately. And then the other thing to watch out for, be careful, our removal is spotty at best. And then along came Zeus, let it go, fire the cannon. These guys are all one ofs in the deck. They are use them and lose them cards. Three, grab your swords, some Tinkerbells. Tinkerbells like your biggest form of removal but she doesn't work against everything, so be careful. That's what these other spot removal cards are for. Gaston does some digging, but he works really, really well with Lucky Dime, along with Bell works really well with Lucky Dime. And then just some value pieces. Cogsworth is fantastic. There's a lot of steel going around right now, and Cogsworth just turns off their ability to steal effectively, which is really great. Uh, two copies of Rise of the Titans in the deck. There are some pesky locations running around definitely the queen's mirror chamber queen's castle mirror chamber uh there's the mcduck manor in the ruby sapphire and then pride lands is allegedly making a return but honestly i haven't seen anybody playing it i just happened to see some other content creators talk about it and they're seeing it i'm not seeing it but it is out there rise of the titans yes you are trading a three cost card for a two cost card but i think it's worth it ultimately at the end of the day because pride lands is turning off our removal and we need it to work but that is the deck guys i am going to atlanta for the challenge event i hope to see you there let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be going if you are going i do want to see you guys there let me know we will meet up maybe we can get a game or two in together that'd be really cool but i am going to the atlanta event i officially have my ticket it's going to be really exciting also who's going to the set championships they're going to be local in your area they're running for two weeks at the tail end of this month so in about a week they start and then they run for two weeks who's going to them i had three of them planned out and then all of a sudden this morning i woke up and found out that one of them has decided that they've already picked who gets to participate even though the rsvp date doesn't happen for another four days three days by the time you're watching this yeah we can't even register for the event for three more days and they've already booked it so something something fishy going on there i don't smells a little funny don't know what's going on but i'm gonna try to go to them i'm super excited for it if i can come home with one of the enchanted rockstar stitches those really cool orange gold ones uh it will be a patreon raffle prize not this month mind you but it will be a future patreon rise prize so keep an eye out for that link in the description down below patreon tier three let's jump in and let's see how well this deck can perform Go one second. How come every time I play hardcore, I always do the first game is always second. <laughs> it's such a rough place to be because if you get to go first, that's an advantage. And then you learn what their opponent's colors are in the first game. And then you have two games, your second game where you go second, you get to mulligan for it. So going second in the first game is such a huge disadvantage. Dime is way too early for this. Don't want to see a whole new world here. Everything else, though, I think I'll keep it. All right. I really don't like seeing Rise of the Titans so early. All right, opponent. What are we playing against today? Amber Steel. I mean, you see Amber, it's just Amber Steel. Like, that's just what it is. 
I can afford to ink the bell as well. Uh, so they're doing damage. I definitely want my cogs worth. I mean, unless our opponent's going to try something crazy here. We're going to see a whole new world straight away. No, they're going to quest. Okay. Mm, lots of options. What item or location? I mean, Pride Lands apparently is making a comeback. Apparently. All right, past turn. So now I can go Mickey Mouse into Cogsworth. Rapunzel. Benja. Whole new world. There it is. I don't know what they thought was going to happen that they needed a Benja to come down before they played the whole new world. <laughs> Alright, we're definitely trading, right? I can't get the cogs worked down. No. No. Don't have any items for the Hiram. Well, lucky dime, but that's actually nothing. And I unfortunately have to trade here because swords is a thing. All right, well, we got the same number of cards in the deck. All right, removal for days. I'm telling you this of the <laughs> of the five decks. I do think that I am playing the worst of the bunch. All right, well, rise of the Titans. Hate to see you go. Not a great hand, honestly. A Hiram that does nothing. Gotta get these Cogsworths down. Gotta get them to stick. That's super unfortunate, man. All these uninkables going on. Fast turn. We're just in a stalemate here. Let's see if I can't figure out how to squeeze out of this. I think Cogsworth's a really good first step. If I can get a second Cogsworth, then our opponent basically just stops doing damage. Except for their uh, Zeus's. And Strength of a Raging Fire. I'll squeeze in a few points. Seeing all the Rapunzel's makes me think that they got Pride Lands. That is perfectly fine with me. We're no longer going to win by Lucky Dime because they are both in the graveyard. Tinkerbell's good, though. I it keeps trying to give me my swords as well. And I just keep not getting it. Well, that's great timing for a Tinkerbell. Alright, that'll probably take out Captain Hook. Yep. Wow, that's a lot of Tinkerbells. The question is, are we going to be able to stick the landing? Hmm. Do I... Stinkerbell. I think I have to because of Beast. Just to keep Beast disabled. Because the other play I'm thinking about is getting McDuck Manor, plus a Popsicle, plus a Smee. Hiram draws cards off the Popsicle. There's the Zeus. Unfortunately, it doesn't kill anything for the opponent, which is great for us. Wow, they're going to go after Hiram. Alright, well, I think another Stinker Bell here is going to be pretty good. That'll finish off the Hiram. Wow, two Zeus's to take out one Hiram. What, can they hear me talking? Well, there's only one more Tink in the deck, so we're likely not going to get it. That would have been a bomb of a... of a get. And they concede? Alright, going, going into game two. Not sure about that concession from the opponent. I guess they must have got a handful of uninkables and decided that wasn't worth it. Uh, I hate my hand. Yeah, I do. I hate my hand. 
every single card in it except for the fishbone quill, which means we're probably not going to win this game if I'm only keeping one card. Oh, gross. Oh, man. Man! Talk about nasty. Well, let's hope opponent doesn't whole new world meme before I get this fishbone down. I mean, I don't got many choices here. Yeah, this, I mean, at least I got, I have just enough to get me to the fishbone at least. And then everything else is fair game for fishbone. That's, this is a rough opening hand. And there goes my fishbone. Uh-oh. I think we just lose the game because the rest of the hand is so unplayable. Yep. <laughs> Not even going to try it. The rest of the hand is just so unplayable. Game three, going first. That's what I want. Let's not get a handful of uninkables. It's a very easy way to lose the game. <laughs> uh, Captain Hook into Mr. Smee. I mean, the only thing that's going to make this better is if I can get into... Don't give me uninkables now. As if we get into a fishbone. No fishbone, but the double Cogsworth could be really good here. Alright, so they play Cinderella. It's sort of a stalemate, but not really, because then that Cinderella will sing to destroy the Captain Hook. So we definitely have to quest with the Captain Hook after they play Cinderella. Oh, it's a, it's a queen! Okay. Well, they're still likely going to do something nasty with it that I don't like. Like, shift into a queen! And sing! Alright, no need to make plans with my hand, because I'm expecting a whole new world here. <laughs> yep, there's the shift. No songs from the opponent. Well, I'm gonna ink beast. I'm gonna play the brainstorm, or the develop your brain? Brainstorm. But I'm just looking for ink, honestly. Blaversham, great ink card. I'll keep Bell in the deck for later. She works well with a dime, plus we don't want her early on. There goes their own beast. Still nothing from the opponent. Well, I'm gonna ink the Flavorsham. Two Mr. Smees. Are they waiting for a double swords? Is that the plan? I don't know, opponent. What do you got? If you don't hold new world me, I'm gonna get at least one Cogsworth down here. There's the swords. So they didn't want to wait for a double swords. Alright, so we're definitely trading our Mr. Smee for the Queen then. Unfortunate. Just needed one more turn here. But I will take you out. On a date <laughs> to the discard pile. All right, Cogsworth down, Cogsworth up. All right, Cogsworth's a fantastic card. None of the removal works against it. They whiffed on the aerial. Love to see it. Let's get a Mr. Smee. I mean, they get two damage on Cogsworth, but that's all they can do, right? Storm just hits Mr. Smee for one. There's five damage. That takes out Mr. Smee. Man, that's a lot of removal to take out something you don't really want to take out, huh? Hmm, do I take down the aerial? No. It is a problem character, but right here, in this position, it's not really a problem. Alright, multiple characters. Swords looking, looking a lot better. One damage to Belle. It's fine, she's not doing anything anyway. Oh my goodness! Double Cogsworth. Alright, Belle takes no damage from that attack. Mickey takes no damage from this attack. <laughs> I think I'm still questing with Cogsworth because it's only two damage from the Robin Hood. Robin Hood has to defeat a character to get the points. 
Strength officially useless. Flute's their only way out. Three damage. I guess they got rid of a bell that way. Uh, let's see. I do... I have to hit with a Cogsworth. Alright. I'll hit him with a Cogsworth. Swords finishes him up. And now we just quest, and that's game! Beautiful. Going second. Alright, Popsicle's really good. Oh, and I like Mickey Mouse. It ramps us into our bigger stuff pretty quick. We're gonna get rid of Rise of the Titans, McDuck Manor. Oh, I'd love to see either a Captain Hook or Hiram. Let's get rid of Cogsworth. Ah, but Cogsworth works so well with Mr. Smee. All right, we'll see. Okay. Well, I see a bell who's going to get inked pretty quick. <laughs> There's only two in the deck. It is a lucky dime deck. So it is a tough ink, but it's you don't want it so early in your opening hand. It just doesn't do enough. It's definitely a late game piece, which is why it's only a two of. All right, what are we playing against now? We have a slight advantage going second because they don't know what we are, so they... They have to choose what they're going to ink, not knowing if the card that they're about to ink could be important. McDuck Manor. Red, blue control. Play your poop sickle. Close. <laughs> And they just let the timer run out. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, Belt. You're just too early. It sucks. I have other pieces that work with our lucky dime. So I'm not too fussed about it. But it is what it is. I think our turn three is going to be a Mickey Mouse. Because it inks from the deck. I could develop the Fishbone Quill and then ink a Mickey Mouse from hand since I have two of them. Both are pretty valid. Depending on what we draw, I may play the Fishbone because of the whole uninkable thing. There's 17 uninkables in the deck. Ooh, and there's a Hiram. Yeah, it's not making it easy for me, is it? Not at all. All right. Well, I thought we were going to get to play a McDuck Manor, but Hiram showed up. We'll get Mr. Smee rolling. All right, if opponent's going to be ramping, I think I'm going to need to have Fishbone Quill ramp. It's stronger than Mickey, but Mickey's a body on the board. It's the only reason I consider it. All right, opponent, are you going to show me? You're going to show me the red in your deck? Hmm. We haven't seen a normal ink this turn, have we? Are they full of uninkables? They might be uninkable heavy right now. Won't be a problem here in a moment, though. Fishbone Quill does some work. Grandma Tollet. Man, it's just screaming to have Ruby in the deck, isn't it? Man, their entire hand is just nothing but ramp. They're going to be top decking like crazy. Well, I can't play a whole new world, but I got to be careful because my opponent's probably going to play their own whole new world. Um, I think we're going to get rid of Beast. I hate to say it, but... And the only reason we're going to do it is because Mr. Smee and Cogsworth work together. If I could, I would do more, but I can't. Half expecting to see a whole new world from the opponent. Ink, fishbone, whole new world. We still don't know their second color. I just think it happens to be Ruby. Oh, man. It could easily be steel, though. It could easily be steel. But so far, opponent has played a mono blue game. Don't forget the fishbone. Yeah, I've still only seen Sapphire. There's the fishbone. Man, opponent's really going for it. But now they have a Gaston who can sing their whole new world. It's great news for them. 
Oh, that's tough then. Do I develop a Cogsworth or do I get a second fishbone and just ink ink and catch up? Because we are really far behind. This is a sketchy play because if they don't have a whole new world, All right, I expect to see Fishbone Quill gets rid of a thing, or maybe perhaps a normal ink. Gaston sings a whole new world, and then they have nine ink to play with. Fishbone just to hide the card, probably. Fishbone's probably inking all the ruby. Possibly steal. Sing that whole new world. Oh, they're questing. Is it Ruby and they're waiting for a real threat for that dragon? They're just going to play the dragon now, right? If that's the case. Ha! I knew it was Ruby! I freaking told you! Yeah, an, an unfortunate start for us, for sure. But... An opponent doesn't know how to click the pass the turn button. There we go. They've learned how to do something. All right, these are two tough characters for us to deal with. Lucky Dime will help. So will McDuck Manor. Hmm. Hate to do it, but I gotta get my McDuck Manor down. Let them spend their turn attacking it. It's not a race I'm winning. But if they take a turn off, yeah, if they're going to take a turn off just to attack it, that's great. Of course they top deck a queen! What a perfect top deck for that McDuck Manor, and they still get a quest for three here. Ooh, that's gross. I think we just lose this game. There's really nothing I got going on. Not unless I can draw a different, a second swords, right? That's not a second swords. Well, let's start here. Capitan Hook. And we'll ink the Mickey. Alright, it's just kind of a top game. Top deck. I suspect Hiram will die here. Alright, Popsicle probably immediately gets popped. Alright, just been sitting here in silence for about 60 seconds now. Opponent hasn't done anything. There we go. Took him 60 seconds to figure out what, we were, what they were going to do. For them to figure out what we knew what they were going to do, rather. Well, that's fantastic. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. Let's draw some cards. All right, opponent gets to react first. Oh, and there goes their fishbone, so their Hiram's don't work. No, I gotta save it. I have to save it for their lucky dime. It's tempting. I think if it was, if they had just played Fishbone on three, we would play Rise, get rid of the Fishbone. But this late in the game, I don't think so. A dragon's really nice for them to have, isn't it? Oh, that's real unfortunate. Well, I have a lucky dime, and next turn I have a Hiram. To try to draw some cards. Not what you want to do with your lucky dime, but super tight spot. That was my only let it go, so I'm going to have to hope for a, and then along came Zeus. Oh no, we are dead. No, we lost. The second Tomato came down, can't deal with it now. Alright, let's go for game two. This time we get to go first. Alright. 
Both decks want to get to the late game, but I think Ruby Sapphire has a much stronger late game. I like... If, if I was going to say there was a worst top five deck, I would say I'm playing the worst top five deck right now. <laughs> uh, Bell is a late game card. Everything else is kind of early. I'll keep Rise of the Titans again for their Fishbone. But I'm largely just on play some items, get some get a Hiram down. All right, Tinkerbell's pretty good too. I'll ink the develop. And we'll move right into the poop circles. It's ink. I'll take it. All right. Now opponent doesn't get the advantage of going first. Of course, game three will be tough because they'll get to go first again. So we want to try to close this game fast. We do not want our opponents to be able to get to a late game. Tinkerbell could be huge, but probably not. Honestly, it's not strong enough to take out their dragons. And then, of course, dragon just comes down anyway. Ooh, and a Capitan Hook. I will take it. All right, I'm likely playing Fishbone, inking a thing, and then the following turn is going to be a Rise of the Titans to take out their Fishbone. Robin Hood's nice. He's nice because he's got a big booty on him. Cogsworth is good too. Which means... Ah, man, but I need Rise of the Titans. Okay. Cogsworth's just slightly better. It has Ward. Get rid of the swords here. And I'm definitely going to start with the Hiram. That way I can keep the ink train going. Unless... There's the Fishbone Quill. All right, we are going to Rise of the Titans, the Fishbone Quill. Don't forget to activate it. All right, this costs three. Most I'm going to get up to a, seven, a six, so I can't pay for seven. Man, opponent really went for it this turn, didn't they? All right, we are going to get rid of you. And it looks like I'm going to be getting rid of a Cogsworth, which is unfortunate, but that Mr. Smeedraw is sweet. Next turn, I'll be back on the Hiram and the Fishbone game. Hopefully. Here comes their own Hiram. Opponent had a fantastic turn of ramping there. They went from like two to six. It was obnoxious. Don't forget to ink. And you'll have just enough to play another fishbone, which you've obviously drawn. <laughs> Tomatoa down. A Judy hops. There goes my fishbone. That's fine. At this point, like my odds of using it effectively are very slim because whatever I draw, I'm likely just going to try to be playing. The only way I would use it is if I got something really expensive and uninkable. So there really are not any of those in the deck. Oh. Oh, it's still my opponent's turn. I'm like, it just passed to me. I didn't untap. I didn't get my ink back. That's right. Judy lets me draw. Hmm, those are nice, aren't they? Hmm. The problem is, is I want all of them, but it's three turns to do it all. We're going to fall way behind working on that. So Tinkerbell comes down first. Got to be careful. Opponent is in Ruby. They could have the board wipe. So I do want to get the McDuck Manor. I think that's definitely a favorable card to have. Yeah, I want them all, so I don't want to ink anything. Well, I don't want the whole new world, so Fishbone actually would have been really cool there. <laughs> All right, play a poop cycle. Quest with Hiram. Ink and a dragon. That's at least two dragons down, right? I think so. That's nice because dragon appears to be their late game control piece. Okay. Got your card with Grandma Tala. 
Judy hops, takes out the poopsicle. All right, I'm not drawing any more cards. So Beast looks like he's a definite play. Gotta be careful, Mr. Smee and Grandma Tala. They want to trade that Grandma Tala. Ooh, Bell, that lets me continue inking. I just want to keep everything in my hand, though. <laughs> Quest him with Judy. All right, we are going to take down Hiram as a just in case here. We're going to ink the bell. Ooh, Tinkerbell. Doesn't help a ton here, does it? Not really. Let's get guest on. The one damage just isn't going to cut it. Okay, Rise of the Titans for a lucky dime. It's the only inkable card. Let's take it. Our opponent hasn't demonstrated a lucky dime, but it doesn't mean they're not a lucky dime deck. All right, I suspect one of the Judy Hops trades with a Mr. Smee. Grandma Tala or Judy Hops takes down Captain Hook. It really doesn't matter, but I would assume Judy Hops takes down a Captain Hook and Grandma Tala attacks the Hiram just for the maximum three damage. There it is. First trade predicted. Now, will we see a Judy take down a Captain and Grandma go for max damage on Flavorsham? Or are they going to throw it all at Flavorsham because reasons? <laughs> no, surely not. Grandma Tala. Okay, so they do, they just don't care about max damage on Flavorsham. Probably going to quest with the Judy then if that's the case. All right, Madam Medusa. That makes sense because it, you know, cleans a the thing up. There's the quest. Wasn't sure if they did have Madame Medusa's or Tremaine's in the deck. All right, well, let's see. I can do a four and a two drop, or I can ink and do a five and a two drop. I definitely want to get multiple characters because if they're going to have these kinds of characters, I want to be able to fight it. All right, here's the question. Do I take out the Judy and then force them to send something else, get my two for one, or do I quest for the three and do a trade. I think I force a two for one. All right, I'm gonna need to ink something. I think my characters are just slightly, ever so slightly more important here. All right, I'm gonna force a two for one. That's not force. They could have removal in their hand, but that's the goal. Let's go and try to force some two for ones here. I want to stay up on game pieces over my opponent. Now remember, we're going first. And we're still kind of struggling here. I'm telling you, I, I do believe that Ruby Sapphire is just stronger than Sapphire Steel. The only downside is Ruby Sapphire, like, there's like... Not much wiggle room in how to play it or what cards go into it. You're almost kind of locked into a specific deck. Which is a little unfortunate, but it is stronger, for sure. We're seeing it here. Alright, I don't like seeing them play their own Gaston. Oh, and I have a queen. It's still a two for one, it's just... It's lame. <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna see both of these quests. Alright, it's time for a Tinkerbell. Unfortunately, it's, it'll also be time for a dragon. Okay, wait a minute. That's nice. I could play Cogsworth and all of a sudden Mr. Smee survives taking out Grandma Tala. I think Tinkerbell's still just stronger. Alright, they're gonna trade Grandma Tala with Mr. Smee. Not a lot I can do about it, but it is what it is. Hmm, at this point I almost want to ink the Titans, but they could be holding on to a dime and all they're looking for is an ink so they can ink, dime, activate dime. I'll keep you for a turn. We'll wait till they're at nine ink. And if they don't jump into it right away, then they likely don't have it. So far playing this as if we're playing against the Lucky Dime deck. Haven't seen Lucky Dime either game yet. Going for the quest. 
They're just questing, so it's a board wipe. Hello, be prepared. Come on, you have to play it so the game keeps moving. There it is. All right, now they want to play a dragon as a follow-up. So Cogsworth is a fantastic play because they can't target it. The only thing that would suck is a Lady Tremaine. Yeah, there's nothing I can do against the Lady Tremaine, but that's pretty much all that we're going to see. All right. Hate to ink it, but Rise of the Titans, I think, is no longer important. All right, so we're protected from Madame Medusa. We're also protected from Dragon with a Cogsworth. Lady Tremaine, on the other hand, is a problem. Amatoa. It's a great attacker. And they've just been letting themselves sit at three for eight ink, rather. I saw my three down here. They've been sitting at eight. They haven't cared to get to nine, which makes sense if they're not expecting to play dragons. They did ink two of them, after all. Inking an item to get an item down. All right, there's a couple of pieces of removal in my deck. There's one right there. Okay. I think I'm gonna go for the Mr. Smee, just to have more bodies. Little sketchy, because Beeper Bears exist in our opponent's deck. The power of playing against an actual control deck. <laughs> Maui. There goes the Cogsworth. Alright, I think it's time to finally develop these McDuck Manors. Yeah, this is tough. Our opponent has removal for everything. Like, our ability to stay on the board is so... So sparse. Oof, there goes Mr. Smee. I was hoping to trade that for Maui. They're gonna heal Maui so it can freely take down the Gaston. I'll take a lucky dime. All right, is this a race I can win? Next turn, a lucky dime, and I play McDuck Manor, and then the following turn, I win if they can't defeat Gaston. Their deck is nothing but removal, though, so we're gonna find out. All right, Medusa Quest, they go to 13. And you have to end your turn, you got nothing else, my friend. Is this gonna be enough? Now they go to 16, play a character, so I have to win on the following turn. I only have 8. Ooh. I only have 8. If only I could have found a place to get a McDuck Manor down one turn sooner. Unless this is a non-character in their hand. A non-character, non-removal. We know they have a ton of ramp. <laughs> Which means this could just be a random ramp piece. There it is! Fishbone Quill! Random ramp piece! Maui staying useless over there. Gonna attack it? I think that's fine. Definitely activating you. Now I could play Fishbone. Ink the whole new world. Play Hiram, break the Fishbone, draw some cards. I don't want to give my opponent a hand here. Alright, my opponent has a million outs, honestly. All they need is something that pops the guest on, and I know they have a bunch of that. They're questing. Are we gonna see a be prepared? Oh, of course. Well, we knew it! Like, we've been talking about it every turn. 
They just have so much. And now I gotta be able to deal with the McDuck Manor and both of my Rise of the Titans are gone. I use, I've used them both. There's one here and I inked the other one. There's only two in the deck. Opponent said good game. They know they win, but they could just end their turn, please. There you go. Tinkerbell. And now they win. I don't know why they're saying whoops. We we know they win. 